You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Which real estate asset class will be the most profitable in 2024 and beyond? I'm Kathy Fetke and welcome to The Real Well Show. Our guest today started his career in real estate right after the GFC or global financial crisis, or what many of us call the Great Recession back in 2010. At that time, he worked in New York City with a fund that was acquiring all kinds of distressed assets. So he got exposure to lots of different kinds of ways to do real estate. Well, Christian Gore today is the founder of G1 Capital Partners, a firm that's been orchestrating transactions worth approximately $9.5 billion across the U.S. So he has an understanding of commercial real estate dynamics and what's going on today. And I'm really happy to say that one of the asset classes that he thinks has the most upside is residential, which most of us here listening to The Real Wealth Show are invested in as well, including single-family rentals and bringing on new supply, which is so desperately needed. That's why we've been very involved in Build to Rent at Real Wealth. If you'd like to buy a brand new property that is built to be a rental, you can find out more at realwealthshow.com. Just join, and when you're there, you can talk to an investment counselor who can point you in the right direction. And the nice thing about working with builders is that they have the ability to pay points to buy down your interest rate, and that really increases cash flow. That's what we've been really active at at Real Wealth. Again, you can check that out at realwealthshow.com. In addition to that, it's so important to bring on new supply, which is why we are also doing that and right now focusing in Oregon, uh, just kind of outside, not outside, but not too far from Bend, Oregon, in an area called Klamath Falls that really has a lot of potential. In fact, the city called us, um, and my, my partner Fred, because they are in need of new housing. So we've got a really cool project in Klamath Falls where we actually have an option on the land. We don't even have to buy the land at this time or develop it. It's already developed. These are finished lots that we have an option on. So we can build model homes on that land, sell those homes, and we don't even have to close on the land until the buyer closes at closing time. So we've really reduced the risk on that. If you want to find out more about that project, just go to growdevelopments.com. Unfortunately, only accredited investors can participate in that. There is a 12.5% preferred return. And you can check that out at growdevelopments.com. This is our 14th project with Fred. They have all uh, you know, all been successful from 8% returns all the way up to 25% returns in the past. Of course, the past is no guarantee of the future, but, uh, there have been no losses, uh, with Fred. So that's, that's a good news. Only, only making money. Okay. So let's move on to today's guest, Christian Gore. Welcome to the Real Wealth Show. No, oh, thank you for having me, Kathy. So let's talk a little bit about your background and what you do in real estate. You know, I, I originally started uh, out working for uh, a, a large a firm in New York. Um, had uh, uh, was fortunate enough to to do a significant amount of transactions. He did about uh, five billion um, in transactions across all product types uh, across the country. This was, you know, really right after the GFC. So, as you can imagine, there was a uh, a lot of interesting things going on at that at that time, and uh, a lot of unwinding um, of, of a lot of loans. So I kind of dipped my feet in, um, you know, in, into that space and, and that world for about four years, uh, and then ended up kind of bouncing around to different buy side shops. Uh, ended up moving back to Texas and and uh, working for some folks here locally. And um, in 2018, I, I decided to to spin off and. Uh, founded G1 Capital Partners that, that we run and operate today. All right. So you got your start uh, right after the GFC, the global financial crisis, also known as the mortgage meltdown. A lot of people don't realize it took down a lot of world economies and uh, you know other economies with it. So you, you mentioned that your firm was, or you were involved in a lot of transactions. What do you mean by that? Is it like sure. buy sell side or were you buying and holding, renovating? What what are you guys doing? 
Sure. Um, we, were, we were doing both. We were selling quite a bit, um, doing a lot of loan workouts. And then we, we also uh, had a large fund that we were buying a lot of opportunities. And, um, you know, and the GFC is a, um, you know, interestingly enough, kind of uh, resonates with what's, what's been going on the last couple of years. But um, yeah, anything from Look, there was uh, multifamily is a pretty strong product, uh, so we, we, you know, there wasn't a lot of that going on at that time, and and how you know that's obviously changed the last f- five years or so. Um, so we we bought and sold a lot of retail, uh, sold a lot of office, um, bought the multifamily that we could, um, and same thing with with industrial as well. So um, really, really was working on you know everything under the sun at that point. Um, Today, I will say what what kind of what we're we're focused on internally is um, we we obviously invest in in multifamily or we just kind of bucket it as as residential um, as a whole. Um, we we do industrial and then um, one of our most active buckets today is is what we call special situations, and so that can be you know anything from let's say uh, a loan sale for example, buying loans off banks right now. Um, you know, to uh, so, you know, hospitality deal, for example, we're we're buying a large distressed hospitality uh, or hotel, a full service hotel here in Dallas that we know well. Um, so it's really kind of seller, you know, story driven or and or event driven, kind of in that bucket. Um, and that and that's that's really where we're spending quite a bit of time. So when you're that diversified, how do you build your team to be able to handle all these different kinds of assets? Sure. That, that's a, that's a great question. Um, yeah, we, we, I would say we're, we're, we are lean. Um, we've, our executive team is a, a total of five folks. Um, most of us sit in Dallas and we have our research team out in California. That being said, we're, we're, you know, we're thankful to be able to partner with uh, a lot of third party management firms. So, um, effectively the, the boots on the ground at, at the assets. Um, so we, we third party manage all of our, all, all products, all assets, and in, in all markets, um, and so you know, <clears throat> folks like Cushman and Wakefield, and, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, we ultimately leverage um, their personnel and their expertise, and um, you know, ultimately look at it as as kind of uh, you know, we focus on on what we do best, which is you know, sourcing opportunities and. Um, and raising equity for them. And, and we kind of let the property management teams um, on site do what they do best, which is, um, you know, manage assets and, and, and work through the day-to-day stuff more so than, uh, than, than kind of what we do. Does that make sense? Yeah, we know that commercial real estate has been hit pretty hard. Uh, a lot of the loans are coming due and, and have adjusted. What kind of opportunity do you see coming up this year as a result of that? Sure. Yeah. So that's that's a great question. It's what I think everyone's trying to kind of figure out and understand uh, in our space. Um, look, I, I think there's there's obviously a lot of uh, there's a large loan maturity wall that's that's coming due. Really started, I guess, fall of last year. The bulk of it is is coming up probably Q three. Q3, Q4 of, of 2024. So it will be kind of interesting to see how, how that plays out. Um, you know, since we are product agnostic, we're, um, you know, where we focus our time is uh, in, in each product is a little bit different. So office is its own kind of animal that needs to get figured out. We don't, we don't spend a lot of time uh, in the office world or arena today. Um, you know, multifamily is still, albeit there's, there's a, uh, you know some concerns there. It's it's still one of the, if not the strongest product type, um, you know that that groups focus on, and you know has gotten significantly competitive over the last few years uh, with with syndicators and and so on and so forth. So um, I think one one big key differentiator um, between really all the product types is is the residential product is is uh, we look at it as, as a necessity or right? it's a shelter you know food water shelter that kind of thing uh, that really kind of separates you know hospitality office even industrial um, to some point it's uh, folks have to have a roof over their head and I think that that's unique um, and so I, I don't expect there to be 
uh, in the multifamily world, um, as much, as many issues, I guess, or, or workouts, and than some, some other product types, for example. So, um, yeah, maybe, so we, we go maybe ahead. just the people who got on those, uh, on the bridge debt and didn't, didn't anticipate rates going up so rapidly or so high. Absolutely. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of that going on right now, for sure. Trying yeah. to figure out the, what, what plan B or C or D is, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Private equity. That's where private equity can come in and sort of help the project. And then I guess take priority uh, over, over the uh, former equity. All right. So are you um, licensed by the SEC? Are, are you a broker dealer? We, uh, we have, we have a broker dealer arm. Yeah. So we actually operate two verticals. We have our principal investment arm, which is where, um, you know, uh, the, the partners at D1 Capital all ultimately invest alongside on a, on a deal by deal basis. And then on the other side of the house or the other arm that we operate is uh, an advisory arm uh, where which uh, for, for the most part, where we're raising funds on behalf of clients. Um, and, you know, to, to the same time, we're, we're product agnostic, but on the advisory side, we, we're really kind of focused on um you know, sponsors who will ultimately be deploying those funds and then um, really strategies. That's it's, it's very strategy driven and a uh, very difficult time to raise capital right now. Um, but we do have a couple of assignments in, in that uh, that side of the house that, that are pretty interesting and uh, get, get us up every morning and excited to talk to equity partners. <laughs> yeah. So how are you? I, I agree. I've heard that from a lot of people that it's been harder to raise capital. So how are you doing it? How are you finding money for these projects sure um you know it, it's tough um a lot of things don't make sense right now um one of the main as, as you can imagine uh, interest rates and re really driven by where, where debt is pricing today makes makes things pretty tough um i will say construction has slowed down significantly the last development deal we did was was in multifamily uh, probably i think that was summer of 22 um, and, and since then, we've we've pretty much been pencils down. That that being said, we we have uh, and uh, call thirty minutes ago, we just jumped off. Uh, we we are starting to look at de development again. Um, I will say in that, especially in the the multifamily world, we have a very heavy focus on on affordable, uh, and it's it's a very kind of specific strategy for um, various different metros that have have seen income skyrocket. Uh, and ultimately price price out uh, your, you know, call it blue collar worker or, um, you know, so we, we focus on uh, projects where we can create affordability uh, for those folks. And, and we really think it's fundamentally uh, um, a very big space that needs to be addressed. And uh, it, and we're, we're working as hard as we can to, to, to do that, but they, they're a little bit more complicated than a, than a standard, you know, multifamily transaction. Well, uh, close to impossible, honestly, right? So why are you looking at new construction again? And how are you able to even consider affordable housing with today's rates and high prices, land prices, everything? Are, are you finding distressed land or distressed builds? No, um, you know, we're not seeing... Interestingly enough, we're, we're not seeing too much distress on on the developer side. Um, and I don't don't think we'll see that. Um, we'll see. Time time will tell, I guess. Uh, but I would say, yeah, we're we're, we're doing um, what I would call public private partnerships with with local um, municipalities, and um, and by working with with those folks, we're we're able to abate property taxes, um, which which can obviously benefit uh, the yields or the returns of. Of the project, and and in return, um, what we're doing um, is is creating that affordable housing. So we'll take typically we'll take half of a property. Let's let's say you know multifamily. So average size is called 300 units. So we take about 150 units uh, in any given project or asset, and ultimately uh, you know rent cap them or you know rent control, similar to kind of what California has in place at a more state level, but we're doing it from a from a private ownership kind of level. Um, and, and that's how we're creating that affordability so that, you know, Austin would be a great example. We think there's a, a significant need there. Uh, same, same thing with Dallas, which is obviously where we're based. Um, 
you know, the, 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 t- the teachers, the firefighters, the really the pillars of the community are the, are the folks that are having a tough time affording rent and or, and or even living close to where they work. And so we're trying to solve for that, for that gap effectively. Yeah. Dallas is a great example. And since you're from there, let's talk about it. A lot of new supplies coming on in multifamily, but it's mostly class A expensive. Um, do sure. you think that that will trickle down uh, with so much competition that the, um, you know, that we'll see enough competition that rents would come down? Sure. Yeah. I, I you know, I think Dallas, it's, it's, it's interesting. Dallas, uh, you know, I would say maybe the last five years, it's 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 the number one market of new supply and multifamily. <laughs> it's same thing in industrial. Um, you know, pretty much all product types, it, it's got some of the heaviest supply. Um, fortunately, there's there's been a significant amount of of net migration, so it's kind of um, I, I don't want to say even that out to some degree, but but yes, we are seeing rents come down in Dallas. We're seeing rents come down in Austin significantly. Um, and I said, so I think there's, uh, I, I think there's definitely probably a little bit more room for, for rents to, to go down. But, um, at the same time, what, what, what we're kind of walking into now is that new supply has really been cut off for, I guess, almost two years at this point. And so we're, there's going to be a point where the d- delivery pipeline delivers, which, you know, over the next call it 12 months. Um, that'll get absorbed. You know, there's new, there's free rent coming into play again. Um, so, you know, same concept as, uh, you know, rent decreases. Um, and, and so I think there'll be a, you know, a window, maybe it's one year, two years where uh, that takes place. And then, but ultimately then the supply drops off since there hasn't been any new shovels in the ground. And so we're expecting, um, you know, rents to, to continue to go up from that point, uh, call it sometime in 25, um, and that being said, I think that's probably when the point most people will pick up the pencil and, and start developing again. And we'll, we'll see where rates are at, you know, 12 or 18 months from now. I'm, I'm, I'm not willing to make any bets uh, on that. But if you were a betting man, <laughs> it's probably going to be lower. Who, yes. Yeah, yeah, probably. But we'll, we shall Post-election. see. Post-election. Yeah. Well, post-election, but also the Fed came out, you know, they've been clear about that, that there will be rate cuts, probably not till the end of this year and definitely some next year. So um, that will that will be good for commercial real yes. estate and for bringing on new supply. Um, what now you also said that you were now looking into single family uh, for you as part of your fund. Why? Where and why? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we we. It, the, the product is called build to rent. So effectively it's, um, you know, master plan communities, 50 to 150 homes, typically in, in secondary markets, um, where we're same concept where we're trying to provide affordable housing. So think of kind of low basis, um, you know, single family homes ultimately. And, um, we, we do believe that, uh, there's, there's kind of a renter life cycle phase. And so, depending on the market and, and so on and so forth, there's at some point, and we kind of break this out in, in some strategies, but at some point in a renter's life cycle, ultimately they'd like to get out of an apartment building for various reasons, kids, dogs, you know, growth of a family, you name it, um, looking for more space. And um, ultimately, you know, housing hasn't really gone down or, or became affordable by any means. Um, and so we're trying to fill that gap um, on, on the build to rent side and, and providing that product to, to renters and, and obviously to investors to, to invest uh, alongside. So a little bit different model than, than uh, for us, at least um, than multifamily, where we usually focus on your, you know, the Dallas, the Austin, the, the bigger markets. Uh, with these products, we're, we're really you know, really looking into, like I said, kind of secondary markets where they're smaller, you know, smaller populations, but high growth. Um, so think of like Alabama's, Arkansas's, Carolina's, you know, that 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 kind of um, those kind of states. That makes sense. Exactly where we focus at Real Wealth. Yeah. And there's, the, you know, some of these markets just didn't get the attention. They didn't get the the massive builds of multifamily and or or single family and there's just a desperate need because 
migration pa- patterns have been going to the southeast for a while, but some of those markets have been overlooked by builders. So that that makes sense. Now, when you say with these build to rent, is it all under one management, or do are there individual investors in there where you'd sell those off one at a time? Sure. So we're we're not um, in that in that space. We're we were net sellers uh, about two years ago, significantly. Um, and I, I will say we haven't been as active as, as we'd like uh, for for kind of obvious reasons. But you know, looking forward, we're um, we're we're very much so in buy mode um, or build mode if if we can make it work. Um, so so kind of with that, yeah, I would say we're you know we're trying to buy up as as much as we possibly can um, specific to that to that product we think there that that has a lot of legs um and and really like the basis and you know the demographics behind it and the the, the lack of supply ultimately i think there's a there's a massive need um for the for, for single family homes ultimately uh, albeit on the on the renting side so we i think kathy to, to, to your question we from a property management standpoint yeah we leverage one property management company um, I, I guess technically too, um, it's a little bit tougher in, in some of these smaller markets to, um, to, to kind of have boots on the ground. And so we, we really focus on, you know, whoever the, the ultimately kind of has the best team on site and w- wherever that may be. Um, if that, if that makes sense. Does that answer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, uh, these build to rent communities, in my opinion, work best when there's one management in place and it's treated like a horizontal apartment, basically, versus exactly. I've seen some people do these build to rents with hundreds of of single family rentals and then sell them off onesie, twosie to investors. And now you've got hundreds of investors competing against each other for rents and potentially for selling those properties. So it makes me nervous. Um, that's just my warning to people <laughs> find out like, is it under one management or do you have a hundred different <laughs> investors uh, with different property managers competing? It, it's a recipe for disaster in my opinion. Oh, so, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Christian, well, any last thoughts for our audience on what we can look forward to in, in uh, 2024? And then it sounds like survive till 2025, <laughs> you know? And survive till twenty five, and in the meantime, uh, yeah, if you can, if you can get things to work or pencil, I would, I would say, start buying. Yeah, no, that's interesting. You're in acquisition mode because you don't see this problem disappearing anytime soon of demand and lack of supply. I, I do not know. Or if you if you can get it to work numbers wise, then uh, I would say go ahead and go ahead and take that risk now and. Um, five five or ten years or whatever your whole period is i think you'll you'll be on the right side yeah amazing and and this lack of supply you believe is mainly in residential not so much in say storage or industrial or retail or office good question we you know we don't spend a lot of time in in self storage and that's probably shame on me um you know i think that is a great space um yeah, so I, you know, I think supply obviously in the multifamily world is is a larger. Um, I think there's a larger pipeline ultimately um, than, for example, built to rent or um, and retail. Retail is a, a little bit different animal. Um, we are looking at retail, but more so from a like, covered land play, you know, very well located uh, type product. Um, I don't, don't think there's much um, depends on the market. Once again, I don't want to kind of come over a blanket statement. Um, but don't, don't think retail has an issue with with the oversupply. It depends on if you're you know talking t- talking about triple net product or shopping centers or you know big box retailers, malls, for example. That's that's a whole kind of different subset. Um, but we're starting to see malls get chopped up, and you know, <clears throat> for example, we're looking at one in Austin where we're building multi. Or we'll be building multi on that site. So, uh, look, there's 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 plenty of real estate out there. There's there's a lot of opportunities. I think it's just you know finding the right the right deal with the with the right people running it or building it or managing it. And um and and I think you know you'll be in a good spot. It's just put, putting all the right pieces together ultimately. Awesome. All right. Well, again, thank you for joining me here on the Real Well Show and sharing what you're up to. Awesome. Thanks, Kathy.
And thank you for joining me here on The Real Well Show. As I said, you can go to realwellshow.com to find out how you can buy a brand new rental property. I personally think it's a great way to go. Insurance is so much less and oftentimes taxes are too. And of course, repairs are much lower as well. And you can get the interest rate buy down. So it all works out to get a nice, new, shiny property that cash flows. And we love that. And if you want to find out about our syndication, investing in building new homes with, where so much of the risk has been eliminated because we don't have to develop those lots. They're already finished. We just get to build the homes. We don't have to pay for the land and until there's a buyer in place. Uh, again, you could go to growdevelopments.com. I'm Kathy Fetke. Thanks for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.